Funding for Alive from Off Center is provided by the National Endowment for the Arts, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is PBS. Really, can I get, first of all, we don't have Julie Dash here, We've, I forgot to mention that, but I just want to give a special homage and um, shout out to Jowelay Willa Josola, please. <laughs> just to get us in on the same page with opening up this reflection. Can I have you to all join me? You can sit and do this or stand if you need, uh, and I won't need the, j you can just follow me. It's just a, a little simple exercise to center us and put us in the same place. You can do it sitting or standing. Right here. Okay. <clears throat> so, believing truly that art asks us to take what we see or, or hear or feel as a proxy for who we are, that art actually enhances our own humanity. So I'm going to ask if in the spirit of this film and in the spirit of Jawale's and Julie's um, collaboration, if you can for a moment just picture in your mind's eye the film that you just saw and grab one image or let one image grab you and speak to Jawale from that image. And Jawale will answer if she wishes or someone else from the audience perhaps maybe will have a comment as well. But let's see what grabs you in your gut or in your heart. Let's leave the mind alone for a minute, okay? And anybody can begin. Yes. Uh, the image of the... The image when um, the woman who is possessed is shaking and drawing and maybe not even conscious of what she's doing. As an artist, I've kind of felt that before where I'm compelled to do something and actually I can look at it a year later and never recall that I did that. And you're a visual artist? Wow, okay. Jawale, if you wish. Well, Minnie Evans talked about, um, okay. uh, she talked about that um, 
uh, as a young girl, she would wake up in the uh, the soldiers' cemetery in Wilmington, North Carolina, and um, we would, in the Western sense, call it sleepwalking. She would say that the old ones would take her and teach her all night long, and that an angel would take hold of her hand and um, and teach her all night long. Mm -hmm. So those images, uh, I mean, it really came from not only Minnie Evans, but just spending, a, you know, at that time I was spending a lot of years studying what we call visionary artists. And um, for myself, it was before I formed the company, I was trying to figure out this place, this profound place of creating. And when I started studying their work, I thought, well, you know what this, what's beautiful about this? They weren't creating for affirmation. They weren't creating to get in a show. Mm -hmm. They weren't creating to be on a stage. They had a profound, overwhelming need to create. And if I was going to be an artist, I had to find that place. And so that, um, that place, which is sometimes destabilizing, and then the art restabilizes, uh, was just a beautiful um, exploration and, and way to look at that. So many images in this piece, so many things. I'm going to look to <laughs> Simon and Gwyn and Nia. I'm going to ask because these are the curatorial fellows and uh, who brought us all here. And um, you've had such a kind of intimate contact with this. So now hopefully I'm asking you to look at it in a different way. Yeah. So uh, when any of you are ready, you can speak. Okay. Um, I think one thing that struck me watching it today and also being in the galleries for the past week and seeing the film as it's playing in the gallery uh, is a moment towards the end of the film when it's just Hannah's face and she's just awash in this orange light. Um, and that image in the galleries in concert with Minnie Evans' work is quite beautiful and, and in and of itself it's been striking me differently seeing the piece uh, so many times now, which is really wonderful. Um, and th there's just something about the quality of light and the, the stillness of that frame in the film. Uh, can you connect that to anything? Why that view? Why you mm -hmm. that? I think it's the stillness. I think mm. in, in the midst of the film, which has so much uh, vibrancy and so much color and movement, and this really complex sonic score and script that weaves in and out that pays such beautiful homage to Minnie Evans' work, that that moment is, is striking and it's sort of just a wash in this orange palette and its simpleness and stillness. And I don't want to put you folks on the spot, so. Um, yes. Tell us your name. I feel like we want to be named to each other. And uh, I'm sorry, I'll get yours too. What's your name? My name is Kaede. Kaede. Kaede, yes, yeah. Thank you for this. Yes. Um, the question I want to ask, and thinking about this type of film, and even with the visuals of it, um, something that I'd seen before, it was a question that was asked to Nina Simone, you know, what does it mean to be free? Mm -hmm. And I would love to hear, um, because when I watch something like this, mm -hmm. you have these moments where you can see someone that is unburdened and mm -hmm. kind of unconcerned by the outside. Mm -hmm. And for the two of you, I would, I would like to ask you, what does it feel like to be free? Hold on for a minute. What does it feel like for you to be free? And then we can open it up to Jolly. And it's interesting that you should ask that question. So the, the question is why? I mean, the, the answer, same answer she gave, which is the answer I can give, is no fear. And I think... Uh, and Nina Simone. Right, okay. No yeah. fear. Yes, yeah, okay. Hmm. 
And I go ahead. I think that this is, you know, maybe someone that I I don't know Ju Julie Das personally. You know, I've I've met Arthur Jaffa, but something about these uh, the aesthetics that happen in this cinematography mm -hmm. and in this writing and the use of language is something where you can you can feel something that there is an absence of fear. There is a hmm. Uh, maybe not even being observed. And I think that's what makes this type of cinema so special. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is why, that's why I asked this question of you, because of, of, maybe this is not the first time that you guys have uh, experienced this type of situation or have been in this type of group. So mm -hmm. that energy uh, is something that I'm very curious about. I think you know it's a it's a it's a beautiful question and a complex and a vulnerable question. Um, the the stuff that kind of gets in our head sometimes as artists, where you're I mean that's what struck me about visionary artists. It, mm. All of that stuff that like am I going to be successful? Can I make a living? You know, all of those things. Um, not. It's just like. Let me just let me just do and be in the way that makes sense, and and the way that I feel. And there's rigor and intuition and research and study. And I think liberation or being free is like just you know, when you don't just give a damn about mm -hmm. like how the outside world if they're gonna get it or not. Mm -hmm. um, that that no longer you're just in it, mm -hmm. and you're no longer concerned about reviews or no reviews or <laughs> or if people understand the form you know that it's just like this is this is the work and that for me is when I've you know when I've gotten the noise outside when I've gotten the noise away because hmm. um, sometimes the noise gets in there loud and clear you know it's yeah. like right. and um, when I've just cleared the noise and just you know what? Minnie Evans was not doing her work to try to get into a gallery to try to. She was doing, you know, and the, the and you know, Western terms we might say she was schizophrenic, all sorts of things that. Yeah. But there was something vital that was driving the need to create, and that for me is when you tap into that source, and you go there with, with yeah. focus and rigor and. Um, joy and pain and struggle and all those things, that for me is then when, it, when I feel free. Mm. And if you haven't seen the exhibit at uh, <laughs> the kitchen, uh, I'd seen once before, like one or two mini Evanses at the uh, art museum in Chapel Hill uh, that, that they had on exhibit when I was there. But just to see five or six together and they're incredible. She is a visionary. And this sense of what is, what is it to not care and, and not f be concerned about even if you're invisible. And I just thought of, Kaire, um, the concept of Edouard Glissant, this thing about opacity, that opacity being that, and again, she was African American, so you know. But opacity being, I do not have to explain myself to anybody else. And I feel that so clearly in this kind of visionary art, you know. Not even asking the question, you know. Yeah. And, and just and I wanna and I wanna say that of working with um, you know, Arthur and, and Julie, I mean, they were fearless. I mean, it was just you know, to see the vision, because I, I said just, I didn't, I don't know anything about film in terms of directing a film, so I trusted them. We, we talked and I said, tell me what to do. I follow your vision. I trust you, let me, you know, where's my mark? Okay, you want me to skate fast, coach? All right, here I go. So it was for me just also, I mean, there, the, the, cinematographers, can't, people on the camera, they, all sorts of things can be happening around them. And that f incredible, fearless focus that they have was just like, 
you know, I mean, there's bees or something like going around and I'm like, wow, they are just focused. This is about this. And so it, that was really beautiful to see their fearlessness and fierceness in the action. Hi, uh, my name is Amaris. Um, thank you so much. Um, the scene that stood out to me is this moment where um, Hannah is combing or teasing right um, her grandmother's hair, and it's this moment right before her grandmother is about to pass on. Um, and I'm sort of thinking, of, I wanted to ask you what how did you think about choreographing black women's hands in this work? Because there's the opening scene begins with washing dishes, right? This sort of domestic labor, and then it's shaving ice, and then it, it cuts right to the sort of drawing scene. And so I, I wanted to think about, yeah, what, what are the ways in which you're thinking about choreographing black women's hands and um, that kind of gesture of care and nursing? Um, were some of the things that came up for me. I wish I could say that I really thought about it <laughs> in some profound, but it, it, it's just, it just was, because that's, that's how we, that, is, that was the rehearsal practice, that was the way that we understood expression. Uh, my background's also in theater, so it's something about understanding that you know, what is this moment about and how um, that through line of the hands is not something that we even were aware of because, you know, we don't know where the shots, you know, we don't know where the shots going. You know, we don't know, it could have been on our feet. You know, we don't really know. We're just in the action. Um, but later I did do a work called Hand Singing Song which really did focus on that. And it's interesting you say that because I have an obsession with hands. I, it's generally the first thing I notice around uh, someone. And there is this incredible way that um, I think of movement being my first language and I learned to speak. But there is this incredible way that we can express something that's beyond words. and. I think we were in, because we were in a rehearsal process, it's an it's a evening length work, so we were doing the work before the film, so we had already been in a, a performative practice of the work. Um, we, were, we were doing the work, again, we didn't know where the camera was really gonna be, we were just inside of it. So it was really beautiful to see how, sh how they laid that out, um, because we, were, we weren't aware. And I'm gonna, again, just taking it a little bit deeper into how and why you, what are hands for you? What songs are hands singing for you? Um, so interesting what we focus on, it is. you know? It's, it's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. I think I said to myself, I, I really wanted to pay close attention to what the opening scenes were. Mm -hmm. And um, I was thinking about what are the sort of what are the sort of, um, what is the focus in which the scenes sort of transition? And there seemed to be a sort of handing, literally a handing off of the scene from, from one to the other, okay. right? And so I was thinking about, you know, why, you know, why is washing dishes looking so tender and so soft? Uh -huh. And then yeah. why yeah. is, you know, how does that cut to this moment where the crayon is like, you know, th you know jostled out of, you know, Hannah's hands? Yeah. Um, and then, how does this sort of, I think of, you know, being tender-headed, but yes. she says that, what is, what is the word that the grandmother um, sings? Uh, in my hair, I keep my secrets. Here, I keep my secrets, right? And she says, this is the, the greatest gift you'll ever give, or this is such a, a wonderful gift or something. And I'm just, I, I don't know, I was thinking about how, essentially how hands sort of were, were transitioning um, or had a sort of narrative presence here mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was for me signaling something around uh, domestic labor around mm -hmm. sort of tenderness and care, mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, that was that was some of the things that were coming up for me. But I I love that hands as sort of song, um, so thank you. I think hair has been, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've been working with images of hair from the very first work that I 
did as, as a company. And there is something, there's a special relationship between um, the time it takes to do hair, particularly when it's hair of this texture, the time it takes and that, that bonding and that relationship and that, that energetic space mm. between the hand and the hair. Because you, know, you don't just let anybody mess with your head. That's you know? right. You don't let just anybody, you know, right. you know. We're very particular about that in terms of African American culture because there is an energy uh, between hand to hair, and that's mm -hmm. that's an over that's a theme that's probably in all, just almost all of my work. Mm -hmm. And Julie, the fact that she captured it, yeah, and yeah. understood something, uh, and again, we didn't know we d we just were doing. We didn't. Um, we w I wasn't like sitting down with her and going through each camera shot. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, because I was a performer, we were doing. And one of the things that was magnificent is that, you know, because this was time you're doing it on two cents and a prayer. And she didn't get permits to shoot. <laughs> so all of those bus <laughs> All of those bus scenes, you know, oh. like we're running on, she's shooting, we're jumping off the bus, <laughs> you know, and waiting for the next bus, you know. And so um, it was just, you know, the glory of just like, okay, we're just doing it. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. But she understood in terms of the film, the vision and, and, and what she had. We were in the doing. Our vision was more in the stage work, mm -hmm. you know, in, in that. But we were in the doing um, in that process. And by the way, the stage work is incredible. And it's uh, like an hour and a half. The, the stage production of Praise House is a full evening work of theater, dance, music, song. Uh, so I, I obviously Julie Dash saw the performance first and then decided that she wanted to make a film. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just so interested in, in this and that you focused on the hair, the hands and the the gentleness of things like labor and doing your hair is labor, you know. Other thoughts? Yes. Okay. I am What's George. your name? George. <laughs> this is Brenda's uh, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, <laughs> um, I'm thanking you all for kind of pinpointing my thoughts because I'm wondering what's going on up there, you know? I see all these people running around. The dance steps were great. The feet, I saw the feet. Ah, uh-huh, uh-huh. Which was a turn on for me, you know? <laughs> uh, now I remember Nina Simone saying, I wish I knew how it felt to be free. I don't remember mm -hmm. her saying that it was she was free, you know? Uh, she, yeah. I remember her, I mean, in the song, it says, right, I wish I knew how it feels to be free. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking, and uh, as I'm listening to the conversations around the room, mm -hmm. I'm starting to understand my thoughts. Uh -huh. Because I, you know, it gave me a chance to, to really, oh, well, that's, yeah. you know, yeah. because I'm yeah. seeing these beautiful dance steps that they were doing, yeah. this woman. She would just stop and have one foot up, like, you know, I mean, that's really, you know, a lot of okay. practice there. Right. So I'm saying, uh, God, okay, and then it shoots to something else and all, and I can't follow it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to follow this like I would follow a normal movie. Not a normal movie. And you can't movie. do it. Not it's a impossible. normal movie. No. So when right. I picked up on that, then I said, well, I'll just let, you know, my mind go and let carry me through right. this. And then as I listen to the comments here, yeah. it yeah. kind of made me understand what I was looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, which yeah. was uh, very helpful. Thank you. George, just the scenes of Hannah, uh, the, um, when uh, mom is putting, uh, not Hannah, the grandma in bed. Yeah. Didn't that remind you of our mother? Of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah. And so it reminded there. me and of, yeah. of, of my sisters when they would do it each other's hair. Uh, that yes. Hair piece, yeah. But that particular, hair part. yeah, the particularly, and then mother. The, yeah, the particular putting Liza in yeah. bed and her, her legs and oh, stuff. God. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> comment, if I may, uh, Florence. Um, I, was I was struck by the inner turmoil, it seemed, 
Mm -hmm. So the um, actresses, they were very, um, that they were in, uh, I guess, denial, or they were trying to figure out who am I, where do I belong, what are my skills, what are my talents, with the dancing and the, the body movements. And of course, the mother didn't understand the turmoil the daughter was going through, mm -hmm. I felt. Mm -hmm. And I think she was really trying to find herself. Mm -hmm. And um, which I think about myself a lot about that. Are you making the right decisions? Mm -hmm. This is what you really want to do. You know, you have to give it some thought. You can't always kind of sit and think about it. You have to kind of go out and, I guess, move or ask for um, advice or maybe observe someone else who's doing what you want to do or what you think you should be doing. So it was very internal for me mm -hmm. to watch her yeah. go through those stages. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. a lot of the artists, a lot of the visionary artists would, would write about this moment before they had the vision, they 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 knew something. Um, you know, Minnie Evans would write about, or, or in the interviews with Nina Star Howe, she would talk about how the kids would tease her because she would see things, mm. and um, uh, she would draw. I mean, later in life, she would draw these animals that she said, "Oh, they're not going to be here for another twelve hundred years." Don't. Don't worry about them. They're not present with us yet. But this, because of the ways that we define reality and sanity and um, how people live in this wide spectrum of, of that, I think for people who don't fit in this linear narrative of what it means to experience the world, there is a lot of inner turmoil, mm -hmm. you know. I and and I think that that's you know Minnie Evans talked about that, but a lot of the other um, uh, Sister Gertrude Morgan, uh, who's an artist out of New Orleans, uh, Howard Finster, a lot of these artists talked about just that turmoil, that mm -hmm. that toiling, mm -hmm. you know, that toiling until something broke through, and it's like I need to do. Um, I need to paint, I need to draw, I need to do some kind, something that expresses this because there wasn't a way for the world to understand a person um, who, who sees what we cannot see, mm -hmm. who experiences what we are not in the realm of experiencing and our only definition for them is insane. Um, and in the, in, the, in the rural south in particular, there's more room. There's more room. There's more permission uh, for people because you know in, in Minnie's community they would just say, "Oh yeah, that Minnie crazy. She's just crazy." But there was an ex there was also a container for her to exist in, and so that was the thing that also struck me about you know these uh, vi you know what I don't like the term outsider artist. Um, I like to say visionary artist, and that they're driven by visions. Um, and also our world view of like, you know, what all of this is. So, yeah, it was a it was a toiling with. How do I speak to? She would talk about how she would see, look up at the moon and see green elephants going around the moon, you know. And you know, how did you, you know? How do you speak to that? How do you give voice to that if that's you know where you are and what you're seeing? And again, the last line, draw or die, yes. you know. That was what, that's, what, that's what the vision that came to her yes. was draw or die. Yeah. I think we have time for maybe one more question or comment. Okay. I think a scene that uh, really stuck with me was the final dance between Hannah and her, and her mother. Um, <laughs> because it looked like her mom was really suffering mm -hmm. and yet Hannah like couldn't quite couldn't. get yeah. there couldn't yeah. um, mm -hmm. and i think i'm just wondering what you were thinking Jale, in that moment of maybe not the meaning behind it but the the, the tension well we talked about release um, and the, that Hannah's mother, you know, 
couldn't live in this world. Her only world was work. That's the only thing that she had, that was what had, life had given her, hadn't given her any other choices. So she could only live in that world and, and the burden of that world. And then we talked about like in, in, the, in the stage work um, when the grandmother passes away. And we played with, uh, we used kind of a African cosmology of past, present, and future existing all in, this, in a continuum. It, it's not, this is not the past, this is not the present, this, that they, it, it just, here it is. This is, and we could access in any moment any of that. So the so the we the tension was that the mother finally got the release, you know that was the release, and and by that release it also released and freed Hannah. So in the in the stage work, there's a huge umbrella that comes out, and all three of them are under it uh, in this song. In 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 Hannah who was living, the the grandmother who passed on. And the, the, the mother who passed on are all living in relationship to one another in a relationship of joy and acceptance. And, um, and that, that, was an important, that was an important part that you know, it's, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's like this. Mm -hmm. And um, Viola, you know, what's, what's hard watching the film for me is that the woman who played Hannah, the young, she passed away, you know, pretty young. And the woman who played the grandmother, Lori Carlos, uh, passed away just uh, maybe a couple of years ago. And so seeing the film and just seeing their extraordinary strength, yes. beauty, and vision, um, it just, it, it just, it's usually very, very sad for me. And this time it was different. Mm. It was sad, but it was also, um, transcendent mm. so thank you all now I know that uh, you said there's not time but so here we are at this very particular moment in time though we know that time doesn't have a real reality and that there are ghosts and hauntings and past and present and future and that all of us who are here at this moment will never be in this same situation in this moment again. Is there anything that needs to be said by anyone in this moment before we close? Oh, and we never got your name. I'm so sorry. Her name is Cheryl Ray. Cheryl Ray says, just thanks. Just thanks. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.